thanks. Yeah, so um, uh, as Paul just outlined, uh, we think what the discussion basically lacks is a, a conceptual distinction between authenticity and uh, profilicity. Uh, somehow the, all these approaches and these critiques of AI and surveillance take note of the shift from authenticity to profilicity, that something's happening with our identity. Uh, but still, even though these shifts are very obvious, uh, they still anachronistically apply the concepts of what Charles Taylor, the philosopher, has called an age of authenticity that was basically emerging in the 17th or 18th century, and that is now waning. But we still kind of measure this new kind of world that we live in, in the 21st century, where the desires and the vocabulary of the age of authenticity, and we're somehow frustrated or worried or panic uh, because the conceptual vocabulary and the expectations that we have uh, doesn't match the actual uh, social experience anymore. Uh, so this leads, I think, to conceptual shortcomings. Uh, we don't really have a thorough analysis of profilicity, because, basically because we still operate with the old vocabulary. And then we have this very strong moral prejudice. So, uh, of course, there's a lot of things that are wrong with profilicity. Uh, but at the same time, uh, the problems with authenticity are not noticed. So there is also a kind of uncritical idealization of authenticity going on at the same time. The next slide, please. So what is profilicity? Uh, very briefly, prof profiles emerge in social validation and feedback loops of second order observation. So this basically means it's an identity that is in, in constant creation and constant construction. Uh, and not just look at someone, but we at the same time simultaneously look at someone or something as they are being seen. So to explain this very uh, concretely, uh, you can see this in, in brands, right? You no longer just see a shoe, but you see Nike. Uh, on the financial markets, you no longer see a product, but you see its profile as it's being evaluated and constantly fluctuates. And when we orient ourselves, whatever, in our academic sphere, we constantly look at ratings and rankings, at um, uh, citation metrics, and so forth. So we already value others and ourselves in the form of profiles. We do it on a constant basis. And uh, that's uh, in, the, in, in the context of the social validation feedback loop and in the mode of second order observation. And again, this is uh, the case both with regard to individual um, identity as an academic, for instance, as well as to a collective identity, for instance, regarding a um, university or something like this, like this. Okay, next slide, please. So we all engage in profilicity all the time. We're creating an identity, we're branding ourselves under the conditions of second order observation and through social validation feedback loops with a general peer. So this is a picture with two pictures taken at a Chinese theme park, one in 2010, one in 2017. And in 2010, the people are still observing in the mode of first order observation, they just look at something. But now we no longer look at something, we look at something as it is being seen by those whom we post that what we're looking at too. And this is a completely different mode of being in the world, uh, Dasein, to use uh, the Heideggerian, ter Heideggerian term that Sean mentioned. As you can see, just the different uh, faces, right? And the different expressions. And it's a completely different mode of being. It's a completely different form of, of um, existence. It's a completely different form of experiencing and building uh, uh, your identity. And interestingly, at the bottom of the 2017 picture, we see the, 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 the only person that hasn't really learned yet to do this is the child in the forefront. But all the others have adopted the mode of seeing both others, or in this case, this event, and then presenting themselves as second order observers. And next slide, please. So, uh, this is all summed up in a, I think, very nice quote by Niklas Luhmann, this German sociologist, who says uh, very lucidly, in today, today's society, we no longer need to know what the world is like. Once we know how it is being observed, and once we are capable of orienting ourselves in the realm of second order observation. And this is profilicity. This is profile orientation. The next slide, please. So, 
uh, our basic hypothesis then is that I, AI and surveillance are the mirror of profilicity, right? In traditional society, we look in a mirror uh, to see ourselves either on the uh, kind of, if we, if we conform to the role that we're expected to play, if we're properly dressed or if the makeup is fine and stuff like this, or we just wanna see generally how we look. Uh, and of course, that's not enough uh, under conditions of second order observation. Uh, basically, everything we look at now, if you look at the first uh, bullet point, uh, whatever, we go in a restaurant, we want to watch a movie, we're choosing a university, we want to buy a financial project. We, regarding all these things, we need not just to see them in the mode of first order observation, we need to see them under conditions of second order observation as they are being seen by a general trans individual peer. And then importantly, we also need to show ourselves in this way. Right. Uh, as a customer, how is my taste in food or movies? I have to form a profile as a customer. As an academic, I have to form a profile. Where do I publish and how often I am quoted? I need to know and reflect on and create all these things. As a citizen, I have to be aware how my political posture is perceived. And what will this do to my image, right? As a lover, uh, I have to look at which dates are su suggested to me and so forth. So uh, I have to always take into consider whatever I'm doing, what I'm doing, how I'm being seen by the general trans individual peer. And that's why we need AI and surveillance. It's a it's a that is constantly showing us how our profile changes. Uh, and it also enables us to kind of um, curate at the same time this profile through feedback through feedback loops. So in a profile-based society, such information is vital for understanding the world and selves. It's like a mirror in the old world. Uh, AI, like mirrors in the old world, AI and, AI and surveillance are vital for creating our own identity under conditions of second order observation. I think that's a final slide, right? Yes, thank you. Just trying to understand though um how much of this shift are you arguing is um caused by like it is actually caused by the technology or is just the other way around the other way around we, we think the shift goes back uh, already kind of you can trace it back to the emergence of the notion of the picturesque and then very much to branding right which also started 100 years ago or even earlier and then the financial markets were very important. So the shift has going on for, been going on for a long time. Uh, it's just, uh, and we think that, that uh, the way the new technologies are used and AI and surveillance is used, uh, it's just uh, um, used in the way that it, that it serves and um, allows this, this shift to, to explode basically, right? So it, it enhances this shift and the possibility to, to apply this, this shift uh, basically in everyone's personal life. Gotcha. I oh, know, thanks for the clarification.